Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another rapid fire review session for you today. Today, we have four knives that I really wanted to get reviewed earlier, but obviously, you know, I've been ill. So uh, we're just trying to catch up on some stuff. Four really cool knives that probably do deserve full reviews, but we're going to do them in these rapid fire formats. I hope I still get all the pertinent information out. I just didn't want to hold these up for you guys anymore because these are all pretty cool brand new knives that you can go buy. I do want to thank Southern Edge Knife Works. Go to southernedgeknifeworks.com. Use the code SDSEK at checkout and you get 15% off and free shipping. Three out of four of these came from them. Uh, the steel wheel was provided by a manufacturer. So uh, what knives do we have here? We have the MKM Asanzo, the steel wheel Sedge, at the Kaiser Yukon, and the Cold Steel 1911. Uh, all four pretty cool knives, all four fairly budget oriented. The MKM is the most expensive and that is the one that we will start out with. This one is 85 bucks in this configuration. This is the FRN version with the Hawkbill blade. Uh, all of them come with Bowler N690 steel, which I really kind of like that steel quite a bit, uh, but they come in many, many, many different versions. They come in a more standard sort of sheep's footy, which is what I thought I ordered, but uh, I guess not. Uh, I did order this one. It wasn't, wasn't SEKW's mess up, it was mine. Um, and then they come with a serrated blade. They come with a more standard kind of drop pointy blade, all kinds of stuff like that. I really like the look of the uh, the GFN ones or FRN versions, uh, fancy plastic, whatever you want to call it. Pretty cool. It has their little MCAM logo all over it, but I really like it. If you want a more subdued version, you can spend like 110 bucks and then you get G10 or Micarta. You can get coated blades, non-coated blades. There are like... A dozen and a half of different variations of this. Uh, I kind of like the look of this one. It does have a nice aluminum backspacer here with this big giant, big giant cutout to catch a carabiner or, you know, seven lanyards, <laughs> whatever you want to do with it. Uh, I will say that looking at it, I was kind of worried about the ergos on it uh, from pictures, but I shouldn't have been because it's a Jesper Voxnase design and he is an ergonomic genius. This knife is no exception. It is not very large. You're looking at 5.6 inches in overall length, blade length of two and a quarter inches, blade thickness of 0 0.13 inches, handle thickness of 0 0.49 inches, and a weight of 2.51 ounces. And it fits my hand perfectly. I have a large size glove hand and it fits absolutely fine. Uh, should not have worried. It's Jesper. This is a bit thin up here. I will say if you're really bearing down, you know, you do notice that, and that was kind of my worry. Uh, but it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, if you want to use it like this, it's got the usual Voxnase, you know, traditional, the jimping halfway up the blade, which works awesome on this. In whatever grip you use it in, uh, it works really, really well. Uh, and it's just a cool-looking little fifth pocket backup, you know, whatever knife. It, it's, it is running on bearings. It's snappy as can be. The flipper tab's a little slippery, as you saw. My finger just slipped off there, but... D10 is awesome. It's very, very snappy. You can spidey flick it, all those kind of things. Um, it does not drop shutty. A tiny little blade like that. Wouldn't expect it to be. Hey, again, if you get a little flick, you can get it to be drop shutty, but it, it's not like a, you know, guillotine or anything like that. But pretty cool action on this little sucker. I think it, the looks are cool, especially like whatever your desire for looks. If you want something flashy, if you want something not flashy, you can find it. And again, between $85 and $110 and uh, seems very well built. Uh, I haven't done much to this at all. I think maybe I loosened the pivot like a quarter turn and that was it. Uh, really cool looking little knife. And this little hawk bill in this, this small blade actually does work really well. As I said, this wasn't the blade I thought I initially wanted, but for opening packages and stuff, this is great. And that's the kind of thing you're going to use this knife for, you know, cutting through a little bit of tape. It's awesome. Really, really enjoying this thing a lot more than I thought I would. Really, really cool little knife. Made in Italy. Uh, just a neat little thing. And it is only 17 thousandths behind the edge, which isn't like mind-blowingly, screamingly thin, but especially for an Italian knife, very thin. It's a pretty good slicer. I think especially in the sheep's foot, if it's the same thickness behind the edge, which I imagine it is, would be an awesome little slicer or the drop point or whatever. It would be a great little slicer. Uh, Really, really cool little fifth pocket knife. Uh, very intriguing. And it's a it's a Vox design, so I should have known it would fit my hands. Well, I'm just I'm just full of stupid, I guess. Uh, next up we have the Steel Will Sedge. I'm really liking this knife. This is the mini version, uh, if you can call 3.4 inch blade mini. Uh, 
the larger version is four inches. So it's even the mini is, is still pretty good size. Again, large size hands. You can see I have more than enough room on this thing. Uh, and it's just a really cool little slicing, piercing knife. It's the standard sort of configuration that you see in steel wheel a lot. It has, it's running on Foster Brown's washers, D2 steel blade, a very nice G10, uh, very fancy clip. It does come with two clips, so it is right hand, left hand, but you have to swap the clip out, which is fine. Um, it's just ergonomically excellent. I, I do really, really like it. The uh, opening hole, they made it kind of oblong, I guess, to, uh, Maybe not look uh, quite as uh, arachnoid as it could. Uh, action is kind of what you'd expect. There is no flipper tab, but it still has really good detent. Steel was usually pretty good. Pretty good action on their stuff. This is no different. Uh, running on washers, it's not not drop shutty, but uh, pretty cool. You're looking at on this version again. There is a larger one. This one is seven and three quarter inches blade length. I said uh, three point four inches blade thickness of zero point one two inches and a handle thickness of, I gotta move my notes here a little bit, handle thickness of 0 0.5 inches and a weight, according to my scales, of 2.95 ounces. Uh, I do really like this pop of blue. I think it looks great. The other color combination is a blacked out blade with gray G10 scales. Uh, either one I think is very nice, but uh, I, I kind of prefer this one. This is uh, just using it Nothing like on the stats uh, blow you away. It's, you know, and this is, by the way, 75 bucks. So it's not horribly inexpensive. $75 for D2 and G10. Yeah, you can find that all day long. But this this is a knife that is just greater than the sum of his parts. Um, in that way, it kind of reminds me. The, the knife itself is right. But as far as that greater than the sum of his parts, kind of reminds me of another knife that I'm going to say is a budget knife of the year contender. And that would be the, uh, the Cold Steel Air Light. Um, is, is another one that's just greater than the sum of its parts. And this this really is as well. The ergos are just excellent. Uh, you're only looking at 15 thousandths behind the edge. It's a great little slicer. And it does not, the, the tip on it is a bit dainty, but it's not too crazy. You know, it's, I just, I really do enjoy it. I like the look of it. I don't know what they do with their anodization on their blue, but the steel wells with this blue, they do it a lot. It's just so bright. You can almost hear it. It's just, I love it. It just looks great. And the whole knife looks amazing. I, I really do like it. Now, the big one would be probably bigger than I would want. The big one would be big because this is still what I consider a full to mid size, you know, uh, EDC, just judging by the length. But uh, pretty cool. I do, I do really enjoy this a lot. It's, it's one that uh, I'm going to keep around because it, it might be might be in the knife of the year list at the end of the year. I'm not, not sure it will win, but it might make that top 10. Pretty cool knife. So next up we have the Kaiser Yukon. This is a $52 knife from Kaiser. It just came out. Uh, pretty cool little knife for 52 bucks. Bowler N690 steel. They're becoming a big fan of that. It's the second knife we've had on this with the N690. It's kind of a VG10 sort of equivalent. I don't mind it. I think it's pretty good steel, especially uh, Kaiser seems to do a very good job with it. G10 handles running on bronze washers. Uh, it's it only only hole deployment, not a flipper, uh, which I do like seeing that. As I as mentioned, I get flipper fatigue, so I do really like seeing something that just doesn't even have one. Uh, it does look in overall shape sort of like the uh, the old Kaiser Kesmet. It, it does kind of remind me Kesmic. Is it Kesmic or Kesmet? I can't remember. Kesmic, I think. Um, it, it does kind of remind me of that, uh, but with G10 and this is in their Vanguard line. So they're less expensive knives and they're really well built. This one is no exception. Uh, no complaints at all with the build quality or the price. Um, it is right hand, left hand carry, uh, pretty good, com you know, pretty good materials. It's made out of ergonomics are really, really good. Uh, I have no problems there. The, this pocket clip is just, they use this on some of the other, uh, Kaiser Vanguards as well. And it's just, you, you don't even notice it's there. It, I love it. But it still slides in and out of you know regular pants very very well. Uh, no, no hot spot from the lock bar, but the lock bar is eminently accessible. That is one thing I noticed. Like you, you have a whole wide range here that you can still easily get to that lock bar, and that's that's pretty cool. As you can see, the action is good. You can spidey flick it, thumb flick it, all that. It's not going to be drop shutty because it's on washers, but you know it's fine. Uh, don't really expect it to be. It's not really what this thing is all about. 
Uh, you have an overall length of 7.8 inches, blade length of 3.4 inches, blade thickness just 0.11 inches, and a handle thickness of 0.5 inches, and a weight, according to my scales, of 3.51 ounces, which golf clap, that is exactly what they claim, and that is that is what it weighs, so they always get a golf clap if you get it down to the 100th. Uh, I'm really liking this thing, uh, also because it's 17 thousandths behind the edge, which is on the, the low side of average and you know as i said just 0.11 inch you know blade stock it's a really good slicer but yet it still retains a really good tip on it i think the high point of this knife is absolutely the blade uh, the rest of it is is good 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 ergonomics and all that stuff but nothing that's gonna you know you know totally you know change your life but this blade is really really excellent and 52 bucks this is a pretty compelling purchase, I do have to say. Uh, pretty cool. You will see more of this. I am going to do a battle to the death between this and the uh, Civivi Dogma because they are similarly priced, similarly sized, similar in intended purpose. You'll be seeing more of this one for sure. Next up, we have the Cold Steel 1911. This is a very budget knife, the cheapest knife on here. You are looking at a price of $36.50 for one of these. Not bad at all. It is just 4034 SS steel, 4034 stainless steel. Uh, but Cold Steel does a really good job with it. I know I'm always saying that it's like a broken record, but Cold Steel's 8CR isn't bad. Like they just they do a really good job with their heat treats, and this is no exception. I have a Cold Steel Kiridashi with the same the folding kiridashi with the same steel it's held up extremely well it does get quite a lot of use around the house with the family and everything it's one of those knives that just kind of floats around and uh, i i do really like the steel from them it's it's not bad at all now uh one thing i was worried about with this knife is uh because as the name 1911 and you can see by the shape of the handle it's obviously meant to be an homage to the 1911 handgun normally knives like that suck uh you know if you're trying to look like something else they're usually terrible uh this is not this is not terrible at all uh pretty impressed with it quite honestly no triad lock this is just a liner lock but it does have a safety on it whatever uh but it, i don't use it much but i'll show you how it works in a minute but uh, it does have a safety there uh but action on it pretty good it's pretty snappy it's not like you know the most most perfect detent, but it's pretty good. You can you can use the thumb stud if you if you have a thumb that can get in there. It works pretty well, maybe even a bit better. Um, it's not drop shutty again. It's on it's on washers. So, uh, but yeah, the safety works. Like here, we'll show you when it's open. Hopefully, you can see it in here. Yeah, I think it's a good angle. Move that up. A little piece of metal gets in the way. You can't disengage the lock bar. Uh, Cold Steel is very, very particular about making sure their knives are super, super safe and are never going to fail on you. And this is their homage to that. There's a name for it they have on theirs, but I can't remember what it is. But yeah, this nice grippy pattern, it ain't going anywhere. The downside is it does. it's a bit of a pocket shredder. It's Cold Steel, if that happens. Uh, it's, it's not horrid, but it's 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 pretty significant. And that pocket clip, is, uh, it's a lot of pocket clip. That's all I'm going to say about that. You know, the Kiridashi has the big giant uh, plastic pocket clip. So, but this is uh, this is a lot of a lot a lot of pocket clip, and the, these handles are um, are just uh, you know polymer handles, so they're not. But they feel pretty good. They don't feel like G10 or anything, but they feel pretty good for fancy plastic. I can't complain there. But ergonomically, it's really comfortable. And that nice ramp up here, it's not bad at all. I have to say, uh, er this pocket clip is you would think it'd be an ergonomic nightmare, but it isn't. And yeah, with this texturing, yeah, your hand ain't going anywhere. That is for absolute sure. You have uh, overall length of 7 inches, blade length of 3 inches, blade thickness of 0 0.13 inches, handle thickness of 0 0.57 inches, and a weight of 3.1 ounces. The only other downside of this knife, I can tell you right now, is uh, it's about 30 thousandths behind the edge, which is pretty thick. It's a thick boy. And luckily, that steel is super easy to sharpen. So if you have the capabilities, if you have you know a system to, to resharpen everything and you just want a cheap beater... The thumb stud does come off. It's only one thumb stud, but it is uh, it is right hand. And I think it's, yeah, it's right hand only. You can take it off to sharpen it, but you put it lefty, it ain't going to close. It's going to hit this. So uh, you can remove the thumb stud to sharpen it. And I would probably recommend doing that and reprofiling it because uh, it is very thick behind the edge. But the blade sock isn't all that thick, but very thick behind the edge. But you do get a really good piercing tip on this thing. It is a, it is a, it would make a great little beater knife. That is absolutely for sure. 
So that concludes our rapid fire reviews for today. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.